Cool. So welcome everyone. Thank you all for coming. Uh, to do? Uh, one, two, three. Cool. There we go. TV in the back. Cool. Uh, today we're going to talk about service workers. All right. Uh, whether they are annoying or helpful, I think that's something that you're going to tell me at the end of the day. Cool. So I'm Thiago Passos. I'm a solution architect at SSW. This is my Twitter handle. If you want to follow me, I'm going to tweet the source code I'm going to cover tonight uh, via Twitter. If you want to get that, um, that's my blog. Um, I try to blog often, like twice a month, uh, if I can. Uh, for today's agenda, I'm going to cover what's a service worker, uh, some of its features, the browser support, as for now. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of a demo and I'm going to summarize at the end. Cool, so what is a service worker? A service worker is basically a script that's, you, that your browser is going to run in the background. It's just a JavaScript, right? Um, it's going to run separate from the web page, so you don't need your web page to be there for the script to run, which is quite interesting. Uh, and some of the, its features will evolve offline, so you can cache stuff, so it can, it can be served by the service worker. You can uh, handle uh, push events and push notifications, which is quite cool. Uh, synchronization, so you can trigger something as soon as you have internet connection, it's going to talk to the server and, and things like that. Uh, and in the future, we're going to have scheduled tasks and more. Cool, so for the browser support, right now we have IE, which is in preview. Um, I don't think you would, you would use IE anyway. The only, the only purpose that IE has is to install Chrome. <laughs> um, you have Chrome and Firefox, they are fully shipped. Uh, and you have Safari, that they finally um, announced that they are in development. Cool, so let's do a bit of a demo here. Okay, so I've got this website here. This is a very cool website. Um, it doesn't have anything, it's just a HTML. Bootstrap and a bunch of images. It's a very simple one. And, I, and now I want to bring service worker into that, right? So where do I start? First I need to register the service worker, right? So as I said, the service worker is just a script that's gonna run in the background. So when you load your page, you have to register that service worker, okay? I've got a bunch of uh, snippets here to help me out. Um, can you guys see that all right? Need to bump it up a little bit. The right now? Yeah. yeah sure. Cool. All right. So basically, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to listen to the load event of the page at this point, and I'm going to register using this API, the service worker API, to register this script here um, to the browser. Okay. So if it's registered successfully, it's going to log. The successful message, otherwise it's gonna fail. Cool, so let me save that and I'm gonna go back to my page here. I'm gonna bring the dev toolbar, okay, and I'm gonna refresh the page. Okay, so I've got this register successful, so it registered my, my service worker. So I can have a look at the application tab here and I can go to the service worker. And I can see that I've got a service worker for this website registered. Okay, so if I go there, I have nothing yet. I haven't created anything in my service worker for now. But yeah, that, that's how you see the service worker registered in your in your website. Cool. All right. So as I said before, the service worker is just a script that you're going to run in the background. And what it does is it, it's going to listen to events. All right. So it's going to be a bunch of event listeners that you're gonna um, attach to an event, okay? So the first event I'm gonna um, attach and even listen to is gonna be the install event, all right? So as soon as they install the service worker, I want to do something, okay? Uh, but before I get there, uh, so just something to mention here. Um, as I said, the service worker is completely separate from the page. So you don't have a HTML, you don't have a DOM element, and you don't have a script tag, so you can't bring another script into the service worker by a script tag. So that's how you would do to bring another, another script into your service worker, okay? Uh, that's something I'm gonna cover later on. And what I'm doing here, I'm just listening to the install event and I'm logging to the console, 
Okay? And here basically what I'm doing is, hey Van, wait for, yeah, just keep waiting, just install that. Right? Um, I'm gonna change that a little bit in the future just to show you how it works. But right now what's saying is just skip whatever you're doing, just install my service worker. Cool. Alright, so I'm gonna go back to my browser. I'm going to refresh my page. And I'm gonna use this update button here to update my service worker. And as I click that, I should see here the console coming up with the install event. All right, so the service worker was installed, and now I can do some stuff in that install event. Um, right now it's not that useful, as you can see. It's not doing anything <coughs> interesting. Um, but let's cover the next event. Let's cover the fetch event. So the fetch event is something that's gonna intercept any request that you make from your, from your page, all right? Whether it's another HTML that you, that you bring in, uh, CSS, a JavaScript, image, anything that you can, you can intercept with the page, and you can basically change either the request or the response, which is quite cool. You can you can start thinking about how powerful the service worker is. You can do a bunch of stuff with that. Okay, but for now I'm just gonna save that, and I'm gonna log which URL the the asset is coming from. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna update my page, and I'm gonna update the service worker. Okay, I'm gonna bring to the console only, so I can see more stuff coming in. All right, so as I refresh, you're gonna see that I've, I've got a bunch of um, script um, assets coming in here. But before I go there, I'm just going to preserve the logs, just so I can show you something interesting. All right, let me refresh that again. I just wanted to preserve the log so I can show you this one, which is very, very interesting. Uh, before Service Worker, you wouldn't be able to intercept the first call that you make to the, to the site. Right? So if you go www.google.com, you wouldn't be able to intercept that until you get to the page itself. With Service Worker, you can actually intercept the first call and you can make changes to that, which is very interesting. Okay? But again, I'm just logging. Nothing interesting. Let's change that a little bit so it becomes a bit more interesting. Okay, so let's do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to modify the response based on the request. Okay, so in the fetch event, I'm gonna um, check if the URL finished with a PNG, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna respond with a different PNG. Okay, so basically what I'm saying here, no, no matter which browser you're looking for, just use Chrome. Like Chrome's gonna work. Okay, so if I save that, update, I'm just gonna install the service work again. All right, and I'm gonna refresh my page. Cool. <laughs> awesome, right? Um, and just to, to prove you that it runs completely separate from the page, I'm just gonna open this image in a different tab. Okay, so if you can see here, at the top, I'm getting the Firefox image, but it's loading the Chrome image. So it's completely separate from the page. Okay? Well, that's... Yeah, <laughs> to hold that. Um, cool, but again, that's not very useful. Okay, so that's just for you to prank your coworkers, right? <laughs> <laughs> just gonna remove that, because that's not useful. But what I'm gonna do now is something quite useful. So some of the features that I mentioned was the offline, so the caching stuff, so I can um, serve that from the, from the service worker. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna change this a little bit, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use this other snippet. All right, so what I'm doing here, let me see if I can cover everything. So I've got a bunch of assets here. I've got the root page, some scripts, image, Bootstrap and all that. And what I'm doing here is I'm using this cache API that's available uh, in the service worker. So I'm opening the cache, and when you install the service worker, I want to cache every single request that's in that array. Okay? And when, when, I, when I cache all that, I'll be able to use that cache. I would be able to serve from the cache. Does that make sense? 
go. I'm going to save that. But before I go back to the browser, I'm going to change my, my fetch a little bit. So I'm going to do this. All right, so what I'm going to do is once I install, I have everything in the cache. And once I uh, fetch the asset, I'm going to respond from the cache. Does that make sense? Cool. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to the browser. Update. Okay, let me update my service worker. Cool. And now I'm going to refresh my page. So that didn't change much. You didn't see any, any improvement. But if I have a look at the network here, so let me close this one. What I can do, come on, get up. Get up. Right, so what I can do is I can go completely offline. Right? So I can go offline and I can refresh my page. Okay? And it still works. But then you're going to say, all right, so you're running local host. You're trying to trick me. All right? So let's try something else then. I'm going to go to the, to the server. I'm running that in the console. So I can just stop that completely, which I'm going to do. Just stop. So if I go to another browser and hit the port 8080, nothing's going to work. The Chrome has, has been covered. And if I refresh the page, everything's looking fine. So I'm running completely offline. Okay? And as you can see here in the network tab, everything is coming from the service worker, which is quite cool. Right? I'm gonna go gonna come back online and I'm gonna restart. Oh, that's distracting. Um, okay, so I'm starting the server again. I'm gonna update my page. Everything is working as expected. All cool. But now I'm gonna make a change to the page. So let's let, let's make a, a very cool change to this page. Okay, so I'm going to my index HTML, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to introduce another browser called Opera, because Opera is awesome. Um, okay, Opera, it was saved. Everything should work fine as expected. And if I refresh my page, I should see Opera at the beginning. Okay, I don't see that. And because everything is served from the service worker, from the cage, all right? So I have to make change to the service worker so it brings from somewhere else instead of the cage. Okay, so let's make another improvement to my service worker. So what I'm gonna do here is instead of coming everything from the cage, I want to try and get from the network. If it can't, then bring from the cage. Does that make sense? Go the other way around, right? From the cache and then the network. You could, but I wouldn't see the point. But you can. You can do whatever you want. Why cache at all if you're not caring if it's in the cache? Uh, if it goes offline, then you bring from the cache. But the first point should be the network, because that's going to be the latest version. It depends on how, how, you, how you use it. You can bring from the service worker from the cache first. As soon as the data is available from the network, then you can update the data. You can do that as well. OK, so let me bring this one up. All right, so what I'm doing here, I'm going to respond with first try to fetch. Okay, so if that, work, if that works, just respond with the, with the fetch, with the response. Otherwise, just bring from the cage. From the cage. Okay? Nothing too complex here. I'm just going to go back there, and I'm going to update my page. Okay? And I'm going to update my service. Cool. All right, so everything is working as expected. Nothing, nothing new there. Um, OK. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go offline. And when I go offline, the Opera image is not coming back. And why is that? So the first time I. The, the last time I refreshed, um, it installed the service work again and got every single request into the cache again. And that's why it got, it got the text. But the image is not in that list of uh, assets, right? So it didn't cache that. When I went offline, it didn't have the image. 
So that's not that's not good, is it? So what I need to do is I need to get rid of all that. And what I need to do is when you serve the request, you have to cache that. Because you got from the network and now you can cache that for next time you go offline, you have the latest version. Cool, so let's do another improvement here. And I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna clone the response if that worked well. I'm gonna open the cache, put that response into the into the cache together with the request, and I'm gonna respond. As simple as that. And now what I can do, I can completely ditch that, because that's now useless. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop the skip waiting stuff. Does that make sense? Cool. So I'm gonna update that. I'm gonna refresh my page. Oops, I think I need to go one again. All right. But I'm not gonna get to it, but okay, so I'm gonna update that. So now I can I can tell for sure that um, everything is cached because for every single request it's passing it's passing through the the fetch event and it's caching every uh, successful request. Okay, so if I go offline now, I should see the Opera image coming. In. Okay, you've got all these failures here because I'm offline, so it's trying to fetch. It couldn't, and then it went to the to the, to the cache. Okay, and I can also see here, if I go to the cache storage in my dev toolbar, I can see what's caged, exactly. All right, so everything was caged. Cool. All right, so the next, the next thing I wanna show you is the, the push event, okay? Um, let me go back to my page.js here, and before I go to the to the push event itself, I want you I want you request the notification access to the user. So have you seen that pop up coming in, in some sites saying, "Do you allow this website to send notification?" So I'm, I'm sure most of you guys would, would see that. So that's what it is. Okay, let me go around. Okay, so. Notification, request permission, and that's basically it, right? That's as simple as that. I'm not gonna cover subscription and all that here. Um, you, can, you can go to the Google APIs and stuff like that to register your Chrome uh, subscription to send straight to the, to the Chrome and uh, Apple and stuff like that to send uh, Apple push notifications. I'm not gonna cover any of that here. I'm just gonna cover the service worker side of it. Okay, so I'm requesting access to, to my Chrome. If I save that and if I refresh my page, <coughs> that work. Okay, a pop-up should come if everything works. Cool, it worked. So a pop-up should come at the top there saying, do you allow um, this website to send notification? All right? Because I'm a good guy and I trust myself, I will allow that. Cool? So the permission was granted, so now I can start sending notification to, to, the, to the client, okay? So the notification and the push, they are two different things, although they are, they are, they are used interchangeably, they are two different things, right? The push is gonna be something that's, that comes from the server to the client, the notification is just something that's gonna pop up, okay? They usually are, are used at the same time. Okay, but what I want to do is, I want to go to my application here. Now that I allow the user to, um, the browser to send a notification, I want to try this emulate push event. Okay, because I don't have the subscription and all that to push, the, to send a real push event, uh, I'm just gonna emulate, and that's, that's how Chrome works. All right, so if I click that, I should, I think I should see something, okay? But I don't, when I click that, I don't, see any, I don't see anything. And that's because I, I'm not handling the push event in my service worker. And that's what I'm gonna do next, okay? So I have to go to my service worker here. Now I add another event listener here. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna listen to push events. 
And what I'm going to do is something very simple. I'm just going to do a console.log um, console uh, in my console. I'm going to configure that notification uh, pop-up. That's just a configuration, a simple configuration, using Chrome, of course. Uh, just Chrome. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna wait until I send a uh, I show the notification. That's as simple as that. Okay. So if I save that now and go back to my browser, I'm going to refresh the page. I'm going to update my service worker here. Let's keep waiting. Go ahead. Cool. All right. So now, if I send a push, I should be able to do something. Cool, can I see that? Okay, I can start annoying people, right? I can start saying a bunch. Oh, I can't, come on, get up. Okay. All right, so that's the push. Um, as I said, the push and the notification, they are two different things. So let's say you change something in the server that you want the user to be updated straight away. You don't need to use the notification. You can just get the push in, and then you can change data in the fly, okay? Which, which works pretty well. Okay, so I think that's pretty much what I have time for. Let me go back to my um, slide deck here. So in summary, uh, what we had a look, um, we had a look on, on what is a service worker, uh, some of its features. Um, they currently support browsers. We did a bit of a demo. And now you tell me what you think is annoying and what you think is helpful about that. Cool. Um, again, uh, work with SSW, we are always hiring good people. If you think you are an awesome developer, just come and have a chat. You can always, you can also go Google SSW employment. Uh, again, we are also, we are always looking for people. And as well, we are running uh, Angular Hack Day. This guy forgot to mention yeah. that. Um, <laughs> but we are running uh, Angular Hack Day on Saturday, the 11th. Um, so it's angularhackday.com forward slash Brisbane. Just come by and, and, and have a chat and play with some Angular. It's free. It's going to be a full day event. It's going to be awesome. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much.